first time I rode was here in Oxford. I've since joined a club in York out of interest because I've been so inspired by my time here. It's brilliant fun. I came down here on a, on a taster day and we had such a warm welcome. It was at that point that the college appeared on my radar, really. Mansfield was the first college we visited and I really liked the look of it and I liked how accessible and open it seemed. They're very good here at, look at sort of looking past the surface level and realising that you know, just because they're nervous does not mean they couldn't live up to an Oxford degree and uh, I stand here as a product of that. It has a really strong personal sort of ethos. It's the smallest college in Oxford in terms of number of undergraduates. So we have about 200. I know the name of every single person in my year. I know what subject they do. I know them to see, I can say hi. Um, it's brilliant. This college has gone to great lengths to keep its embrace wide, its gates open, and hard work has gone into the opportunity being available to people from unusual backgrounds. And we have many, many students for whom this has been the life-changing thing. I love being with the students. They are the joy of it, and for me that's, that's our future. But we have to make it great for them. They have to have good facilities. It mustn't be different for my students, for how it is for the students at the, at the perhaps richer colleges. I really put my mind to that first off, was to have better kitchens, better opportunities for going for coffees and having nice lunches and being on site and being able to provide that for bigger numbers so that that brings revenues into the college. I've got a very clear mind on uh, making sure that this college survives and, uh, and is sustained into the future. To attract the very best students to Mansfield, we have to have good facilities. We were operating from kitchens that originated from the Victorian uh, origins of the college, and it was really important that we actually uh, moved into the 21st century with our, with our catering facilities. Now we can serve up to 150 in the chapel, a further 80 or 90 in our dining hall, and we have our downstairs cafe area as well. So we, we have multiple options in terms of feeding conferences, students and our fellows as well. Oh, it's fantastic. It'll make a huge, huge addition to the student experience here. Phase one of Mansfield's development project has been completed in the form of the East Range building and there's already excitement about the new building, the phase two of the development project. One of the things that we have to do is bring some more of our students into the college, live here, be part of this community, and at the moment they're having to go out in their second year. The fact that we don't have enough accommodation to give every student three years living in really matters in Oxford. The fact that we can't really organise seminars and conferences here because there just isn't enough accommodation makes us very precarious financially and it makes it difficult to attract students in in a really competitive market. Living in college is, is really good. The, the accommodation is obviously cheaper than paying for rent. Our, our terms are so short and signing a 12-month lease when you'll only be in Oxford for six months mm. is annoying. Things like being within a stone's throw of the library is very, very, very useful um, when you have the workload that we do have. We have a corner of the quad that hasn't been built on. So how could we turn this into a place that would provide new rooms for more students, which could then be for renting out in the off-season, in the summer, and when there, our students aren't here? Ways of bringing more revenue into the college. The Love Lane building will occupy the southeast corner of the quad. It will have an auditorium which can be quickly adapted for different purposes and some much needed seminar rooms. Most important of all, there will be 78 new ensuite bedrooms, increasing Mansfield's student accommodation by 75%. It, it will be an exemplary um, sustainable building. It will be a, probably the greenest building in Oxford when it's constructed and completed. Very sympathetic to its surroundings. It probably doubles our capacity for, for holding you know, significant conferences we will have rooms of a standard that, that matches anywhere else in Oxford. And that's really important to us. The, the net addition to our income will be very significant. They make it like it's a shield. The tutorial system costs a great deal. We believe that it's important, we believe that educationally it's crucial, but that comes with a cost. And so one of the great things about the new building is that 
it will provide an additional revenue stream for the college that will help to maintain and sustain that process. We have a lot to offer students who, who might find applying to Oxford slightly nerve-wracking but are really smart. A lot of people don't feel like they can apply to Oxford. I certainly had a lot of friends in my school who easily had the grades but just didn't want, didn't apply, they didn't think it'd be right for them. And by showing them around Oxford you give them a chance to see that, you know, maybe it could be. The new building will help us because that brings income into the college which we can use. Part of that we would use for doing access work to encourage more people to apply to Oxford and to Mansfield in particular. We want to have this new building and the way that we can make that possible also is by bringing into that building the Institute of Human Rights. Oxford's a great place for doing that, it has a great law faculty. Mansfield has the, the ethic and the ethos that can embrace that within our parameters and so the combining of the two things I think will enrich Oxford and enrich Mansfield um, in many, many ways. We hope the funding will come from two main sources. Uh, the first is from donors to the Human Rights Institute itself. These are individuals and foundations uh, who are committed to the furtherance of human rights around the world and see this institute as a key part of that. The second is from friends and alumni of the college and we've been very fortunate to have a, a fantastic starting gift of £2 million, a pledge from uh, Guy and Julia Hands on a matched funding basis. Matched funding support means that a gift of £100 could amount to £256 for the appeal fund. When Julie and I first got involved, one of the things we thought about is how do we get the college to a level where it can sustain itself for the next few hundred years? And getting this building built, having that extra space, will do that. I think the impact of the new buildings and the landscaping will be extraordinary. Feel such a strong community. I think we're all here to rally each other on and that's why we achieve so much. There's just so much to enjoy here. Imagine the difference this building is going to make, not just to the college, but to the world. And you can join us on this journey and really make a mark on future generations. I hope you will.